Hello and welcome back to Tales of Basuria. That's right. We're back to this. Uh, last night we finished up Ghost. Um, and it's because it was so short and I forgot I had to work. <laughs> but I did do my work. Um, <coughs> I was able to grind some more. Um, as you can see, we're quite considerably um, higher levels than the last time in part uh, three of the bonus. Velvet's at max health. Um, finally, finally got the unnamed blade. And I had so much of the other equipment that when I dismantled it all, yeah, it's nine it is level nine and if we come here to items we have enough to go to level 10 when we get the acerite uh, also you may notice velvet is missing her jacket um, during this trying to get the unnamed blade RNG hated me so much. Um, I did cooking. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> God. Uh, and I had her um, cook meals. As you can see, she's level 15. Everyone else is level 1. <laughs> that tells you how much we fighting we did. Um, I left the auto cook on so we could just get these last two. And it's not that far. Um, but as a bonus, um, I think it was at level either ten or twelve. One of those two levels got velvet. Um, without a jacket and really that's the only thing that happened that um, you guys didn't see the rest of it was just me grinding and dying a lot <laughs> and killing a lot of things so yeah um, that's pretty much it I mean If Velvet needs to loose her back coat, she will. That's all there is to it. Yeah, so. That's about it. Uh, so, I'll put her back in her uh, regular clothes. I did that. Or uh, put the. Uh, um. Jackless, jacketless one on, so I would make sure that I would um, let you guys know. So let's go to the dimensional rift here, and let's finish up the heavenly steps. Oh, and let me pull up my map here. And I don't remember the last time if um, all of Velvet's equipment was plus nine, but also got a bunch of treasure rooms too, and uh, yeah, all of her equipment except for the name belt is level nine. Um, Magilu, uh, she's got a couple level nines. The Gobble Doppelganger is level seven. Rokuro, um, he's pretty much the same. Eleanor, uh, a couple. And these two are still the same, so really Velvet's the one who's <laughs> uh, powered up. So we are going to the sixth chamber.
Ooh, a treasure room. Let's see, are we lucky or are we not? So far, not. Huh? Yep. Alright, so. Two. Four. Oh, yeah, this is gonna be a bad room. Most of the consumables. Yeah, this room was most of the consumables. So let's go. Um, so we're here. Let's get the um, treasure chests. There's 11 of them down here. That's one. We'll collect all the treasure chests, then we'll go, um... Uh, hit the... Uh, Malevolence Flame and... Um... Oh, god damn you! <laughs> Fucking... That's the end for you. What an easy victory. Okay, we are uh, one right there. Oops. Oh, what's this? Oh, glass. So the other one should be back up over here. And... Wait. Oh, you son of a bitch! Come on, really? Okay, the next one. Oops, next few uh, up above. God damn it. I'm up. Oh, what what we hit? I don't know what we hit. I'll finish this. Oh, you can't do it. I can't even call that a fight. Leave alone. Yeah. Let's 
so the other one is down. God damn it. Here. Crap. Go away, go away. Oh, you son of a bitch. I'm tired of looking at these enemies trying to get the unnamed blade. So, if I seem like a, li a little bitter about these guys, that would be why. Stop guarding, get out of the way. Good job, Elena. Just get rid of them. Did you think you could escape me? <sighs> okay, um, so yeah, we're done up here. This one. Up. Now the other side. Is oops upstairs. Uh oh, uh oh, okay. Stay. Uh, yeah, the cat's helper is upstairs. Okay, we did that one. Next one is over over here. There it is. That one. Back in this corner. Upstairs. Oh, it's gonna be upstairs. Up. No, I don't have the map memorized. Oh, what the treasure chest for? No, out. Or because that was in a priority. Given the unnamed blade was. Damn you! Leave alone. Get out of the way. Yeah, getting those powders were also, um. Uh, I did last night. God damn it. Oh, that last one's under us, damn it. But once I um, figured out where we could, uh, where I can grind um, some of those, getting those um, powders, it wasn't all that bad to get.
the actual leveling up the um, equipment wasn't bad. There it is. Back there. Ah, do do do. Yeah, the leveling, um, getting them enhanced. Not bad. Not bad. Definitely the um, grinding was a nightmare for um, the unnamed blade. Not doing that again. You would think it would be simple, but the most powerful weapon in the game. Really think it would be like that simple? Of course not. They would make it as painful as possible. And the other ones over here. That's all the treasure chests. A bunch of crap. So the cat's helper. Going to be Get him back in. God damn you. Those thorns. Let me throw out thorns. Protect the malevolence. Reduce the malevolence. And then lastly, delay. Alright, now let's go get all these guys. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. Yeah, I'm more worried about the boss fight than I am the um, getting the malevolence flames. I'm extra good at being Get over here. Come on. Ah, motherfucker. I hate flying enemies. Come on. Die, motherfucker. Yeah, more than enough time. Oop. 
High five. Come on. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. There we go. Finish this Come on. There we go. There we go. Come on, come on. Well, that about does it. Yep, uh, yep, 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 yep. That's that one. So we need to go up. Close this ladder is back here. Do, 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 do. Climb faster, brother. Climb faster. There we go. God damn you! Trying not to sneeze. Not bad. You too. Alright, so fucking out the way. And then there we go. Hit that. I'll show you the beauty of my <laughs> Fucking the harpies go away. There we go. Die, 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 die. Be proud. You made me unleash my full power. Okay. So the last one is get away. That's down his over there. Oh, ho, 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 we're almost done, almost done. Yeah, I still absolutely um, love this game. Still one of my favorites. Even though at times it does frustrate the hell out of me, but... Ah, oh, where the fuck did you come from? They just kind of popped into existence right in front of us. Come on, get out of the way.
Come on, hit. Stagger. There we go. The victory okay. is ours. Bop. I'm extra good at these. Oh, right. These guys should be quick to get rid of. We can't stagger these fucking things, can we? Yeah, we can't stagger them and get the uh Um, to, um, what is it called? Like Soul Break or something like that? Is that all of the Malevolence? I think that is. I think we are done. Woohoo! Last time! Alright, come at me. A forward Come on. Why is Velvet's not triggering? There we go. Because this fucking thing keeps guarding, that's why. Nah, oh, that's just great. Velvet died. Why is Aizen in and not Bokuro? Quit fucking guarding. I hate these enemies constantly guard and you can't. Come on. 
Come on, come on, come on. Margulu should kill it. Nope. It was a close. There we go. But I am the victor. What was the amount of material receiving? That would be helpful. That would have been helpful so much sooner. Oh, that, that, that is a little frustrating right there. Please, miss. Can you tell us what happened in the heavenly realm? As you wish. As a young Malakim, you have every right to know the nature of the events in which we have entangled you. To the Seraphim, malevolence is as poison. The Earth Dwellers create malevolence and therefore pose a very real threat. Thus, the Seraphim decided to eradicate the surface world, humanity included. <laughs> but that's insane! There did dwell among the Seraphim those who desired coexistence with mankind. Those more merciful Seraphim made a bet with the ones who sought annihilation. They descended to the earthly realm. They would prove that they could overcome the malevolence and live among the humans. And those Seraphim became the Empyreans and the Maliki. Just so. And when their dream is realized, the heavenly gate will open, and humanity and Seraphim, the heavens and the earth, will be as one. And so, the pact was formed between our realms. But even after tens of thousands of years, that dream has not come to be. There was never any chance. In exchange for making the pact, the remaining Seraphim imposed a rule upon human and Moloch. More a curse than a rule, truth told, it made coexistence impossible. From the beginning, the Seraphim decided to cast us and the humans aside and to destroy us together. It was all meaningless, futile. A rule and a curse imposed upon human and Moloch. Hmm, I'm pretty sure I see where this is going. Yeah, I think I get it. I don't like this. Expedition return! Hey! Let's Scout ship said. How sweet. I'm gonna still level 16. Oh, look. It's another cat's. Well done! You've come a long way to find me here. Meow. Now, as for your reward... If it's another cat's towel, we have plenty already. No, meow. I think this should still be worth your while. Because I'm throwing in a gel! A gel! Why are you cats so insistent about us having this stuff? Because they're cat's towels! Everyone deserves a cat's towel! Meow. There's something every cat loves! Something the whole world loves! Uh... All right. If you insist, I'll take it. <sighs> now I'm stuck with one, too. Is that Eleanor's? Yep. Ah, uh, 
Get a wall point. There we go. Ah, oh, so I wonder what's up here. Pretty big empty room. Nothing. I don't remember if I made it this far or not. Well, obviously not because we got the Acerite. Ah, so what's going on up here? That. Is that the Heavenly Gate? There's some cutesy looking creature over there. I'm impressed. You have actually made it all the way to the Heavenly Gate. That voice. You're the one who's been speaking to us? Yes, that is me. I am Zuifu, a Malak and former Seraph. Wait a minute. You're a Rapig. Did the curse you mentioned turn you into one? No, that's just how she naturally is. She's like Morgrim that way. That curse is what turns humans and Malachim into demons and dragons, right? That is correct. The Malachim who descended to the surface banded together with like-minded humans. They truly believed they could change the world. But because of the curse, their cooperation came to a swift end. Even minor disputes gave rise to malevolence, and demons and dragons quickly filled the land. The demons shredded the Malachim who loved humanity, and the dragons devoured the humans who trusted the Malachim. Nearly all Malachim abandoned their dream of peaceful coexistence and distanced themselves from humanity they would forever regret having descended from the heavenly realm. Then every dragon we fought on the way up was here simply because they were trying to get back home. That must be what the cats meant when they said this place has the power to draw in Malachim. What about you? Are you one of the Malachim who gave up? It was futile. Humans with resonance, already rare, dwindled to almost total extinction. Eventually, they forgot the very existence of us Malachim. Malevolence spewed forth endlessly, and again and again did demons and dragons cover the land. If Enominat hadn't subdued the world and reset the balance, mankind and Malachim would likely be extinct. Is that to say Enominat is a safety valve of sorts? That is precisely his function. Enominat stands as an auxiliary Empyrean, tasked as the final bastion preventing this world's demise. Malevolent spreads. Enominat suppresses. Malevolent spreads again. We're stuck in a vicious cycle. Oh my! Seems like we're screwed. Our only hope lay with the Empyrean's Pact Keepers, but... A Pact Keeper? A Pact Keeper is one who possesses an honest heart and strong enough resonance to form a pact with an Empyrean. Unfortunately, the current Pact Keeper, Artorius, is using Innominat's power in an attempt to control the nature of humans and Malachim. Although, when the alternative is an eternal cycle of tragedy, perhaps it is better not to feel tragedy at all. That isn't funny. It's not a joke. I believed in humanity for tens of thousands of years, but there's no point. And what of you? Do you still cling to the hope that malevolence can be extinguished? That we can coexist? I'm not sure I care. What? I'm tired of you going on and on about how everything is futile, so I've got one thing to say. Wallow in your own misery for all I care. But this so-called earthly world is where we all live. Yeah, maybe it's futile. 
And maybe it's irrational, but as long as we're born here, here is where we live. Right here, we're living our lives. Humans, demons, Malakim, witch, reaper, exorcist, each one of us. But the time for Inominat's suppression is close at... I will stop it, no matter what. You, you've learned the workings of this world, and yet... I don't give a damn about Seraphim in some heavenly realm, or the nasty way the world works. When it comes down to it, I'm still me. What I hope for is mine to decide, and no one else's. Well, if everyone said their piece, let's get going. I truly feel your pain. I honestly hope you can find a way to be at ease. You keep on angsting about this heavens thing. Just leave the rest of us out of it. And if you get in our way, we will not go easy on you. Humans are peculiar. They are. They're strange, scary, and they do what they want. But really, if you ask me for my opinion, I honestly don't think that their world is all that bad of a place. Do you think you'll still be saying the same thing when you've become a dragon in the ages to come? I... really don't know. But... for now, I'll live my life to the fullest. If there exist Malakim and humans like that, perhaps some hope remains after all. Zenris, perhaps there will come a time, as you had hoped, for humans and Malakim and Seraphim. Ah, so we go. Gonna go? Yeah. That's it? Oh, that's pretty. Boo. You found me! Thank you so much! Now, to show you my catitude, I'd like to invite you to a nice, soothing bathhouse I found. Now, a bathhouse? Yep! The Super Spa! One dip in their baths and you'll feel as good as Mew! Inside and out! Speaking from experience, I can promise you it's so amazingly perfect, your soul will leave your body. Super Spa, is it? Wait, is that why we've been lugging around all these cat's towels? You got it! Meow! It's not a mixed bath or anything, right? No need to worry, Meow. Men and women both have their own dedicated baths. If you insist. I could definitely stand to unwind after so much fighting. Mm-hmm. I'm positively tingling with anticipation. You know, it might be nice to have some serious bonding time before the final battle. Actually... I've never been to a bathhouse before. Oh, you're in for a treat. That steam will have your skin silky smooth. And there's nothing like a good drink after a hot bath. This gate of travel will take you there straight away. Feel free to use it anytime. Oh, well, let's... I guess let's see what this is about. Like I can feel my soul just floating off with the steam. Ah, it feels like all my wounds are melting away. Ah, I'll say, the water is just the right temperature, soothes all the important places. Wait, what? What the hell? Don't splash the water around, Velvet. That's totally bad manners. I can't help it. 
My legs don't reach the bottom. Oh, wait. Am I in Fee's body? Oh, and I'm inside Rokuro. Oh, look at these muscles. <laughs> I'm actually as tall as I always wished I was. What the devil's going on in here? This is what makes this place so special, Meow. You feel so perfectly divine that your soul floats away and switches bodies with someone else, Meow. <sighs> Sheesh. Looks like even Bianfu and the cats have swapped bodies. Wait, does that mean that the men are now in our bodies? Well, this place certainly wasted no time in getting weird or awkward. Uh, I'm not really comfortable with this. What do we do? I feel like I've got an inner tube strapped to my chest. Aizen, is this another side effect of your curse? As if the Reaper's curse would do something so ridiculous. It's probably just that cat's playing a prank on us. I'm amazed that you can stay so calm despite all of this, Aizen. Ha! This doesn't bother me in the least. My sister and I used to take baths together when we were kids. I suppose that makes sense. Well, we might as well enjoy ourselves. The water here does feel quite nice. Rokuro, you lech! Cover your eyes this instant! Fine, fine. No need to shout, Eleanor. Though I have to say, your body is nicely agile. Though, your butt is a bit bulky. Hey! Keep my hands to yourself! Uh, Eleanor! Don't stand up! Hey, cats! We better not be stuck like this forever. No need for concern, Meow. You'll all go back to normal once you leave the spring. Right then, everybody out. This is just too weird to be relaxing. Actually, before we go, I've noticed the cat's been staring at us for pretty much the entire time. Yeah, that's Bien Fu. Smack him for me. Got it. That's too bad. It was such a lovely hot spring. I wish we could have stayed a little longer. No, you really don't. Let's all agree to forget this ever happened. How do you expect us to do that? Don't go asking for things we can't actually do. I said forget it! If you insist, I'll, I'll try. Uh, fine. Yeesh, so much for a nice team-building exercise. I feel like this has just driven a wedge further between us. I heard you kept your eyes covered the whole time. Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's so you. What's the problem? I was just trying to be polite. It's fine. There's no problem. But I didn't cover mine. Oh. oh, Velvet! Why would you even tell me that? <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. Ah. <laughs> uh. So, we are done here. So that is the heavenly sup guys. So, let's see the next one is the ice fields. Do, do, do. Oh, I... Wait, we're here, by the way. Okay, there's a side quest here somewhere. The question is, where? That's the code red. Well, we might give it a shot, but let's first come over here and make a save. Before something catastrophic happens.
so let's go deal with code red and find this quest here. This is the code red. That doesn't work. The magic basically only thing that affected. Now we just keep reflecting no matter what. It has reflecting damage, that was What's the trick to this one? Is it just guard? What is the trick to this one? Okay, this. is a little uh, annoying.
Oh, well. Reflective equipment. Reflective. Life like anyone has reflective damage. Which they say coming in and we just knocked this down to simple. Hey, no, 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 go away. And then we kill it on simple. Kind of cop out, but you know what? Woo! It's a baby. They were not. I just want that thing gone. And the cooking level, cool. Um, let's come back here. Gained a cooking level seventeen. Um, so let's go there. Oops. Map. What the? Spot, right? Ice I have ice caps. No, we're not. Um
Halibis? Yes. So... Let's head back this way and see if we can find this quest. Back. <laughs> Show him how Ifried's crew can sail. Yeah. Doesn't help.
Talk to the pilot next to the ship. One day I'll be good at this. <laughs> Not that one. Since the dragon pad and warmer. So that's young fishman. An island. Okay, no. So we're here, and we head to the inn. Have you heard the rumors? People are saying there's a talking Pengyon around. I didn't know Pengyons could talk. It's true. Three people have already talked with it near the beach at night. You don't say. We should totally try to capture it. It'd be a great addition to Moggy Lou's menagerie. Well, this is no light matter here in Salt. Local legend has it that when the end times come, a talking Pengyon will declare judgment upon the sinful. Everyone who's encountered this Pengyon has been bedridden from the sheer shock of it. Are you sure it's not just some demon? It doesn't appear to be, though it does seem to be quite aggressive. It goes after people, attacking them as it yells, I'm a medical student from Rize Maxia! Is that supposed to be its judgment or whatever? I have no idea, but whatever you do, you'd better not visit the beach at night. This is some kind of reverse psychology trick, right? Okay. Yes. Oh yeah, we got a bunch of money too. Ugh, I can't sleep. I think I'm going to head down to the beach and check things out. I'm with you. Some things just can't be avoided. You're going to look for that talking penguin, aren't you? What makes you say that? We're just going on a walk. So we come down here. Look, Velvet! There's a penguin! Think it might Oh, good evening. Lovely weather, isn't it? It really talked! I can't believe it. Something I eat can talk? Huh? Wait, do you guys eat us penguins too? <sighs> Why does it matter? Please answer my question. It's very important. I'm sorry, but yes, I eat them. And I'll happily devour most anything if I have to. Well then, 
I suppose you people are just like the others who came before. I can't let you keep doing that! Oh, and what's a cutesy little pengyon like you plan on doing about us big bad humans? If I recall correctly, he's from another Tales game, isn't he? I turned back into a Pangyon. No matter. Wait. Why are you so intent on fighting us when you're outnumbered? I have to protect my fellow Pengyons from the likes of poachers like you. Poachers? We're not poachers, I swear. We just came here to see a talking Pengyon. Really? But then, why did you guys say you eat Pengyons? Sorry, I guess we should have explained more clearly. This one will eat anything. Y yeah sorry about that. And as for me, the only pingin I ever eat is what I buy properly at the market. We're not good people, but we're not those kinds of villains either. Oh, well in that case, I should apologize for jumping to conclusions and picking a fight. I just ran into some pengyon poachers earlier, and I'm afraid I'm a little on edge right now. Those must be the other people who've spotted you here. They're all sick in bed just from the shock of meeting you. Small fries like them. I bet they'll think twice before they try to poach another animal. So, what are you then? Some special representative of Pinyon kind? No, I'm Jude Mathis. I'm a medical student from Riza Maxia. A medical student from Riza Maxia? It's in a different world from yours. Actually, I'm a human just like you all, but... Somehow I was flung into this dimension, and when I came to, I looked like this. So, basically, you're a human from another world, but when you came here, it made you turn into a Pengyon? The story of yours, quite a tale. The whole thing's pretty hard to believe. It certainly is. However, when I was lost and confused, the Pengyons here were kind to me, and took me in as their own. I wanted to repay the favor to them since they've done so much for me. So you've been protecting them from any poachers who come. But don't you have bigger things to worry about right now? Looks to me like you're too soft-hearted. I get that a lot. Well, we've heard your story. But even if it is true, it doesn't sound like there's anything we can do for you. Don't worry about me. I'll figure out how to get home on my own, one way or another. The problem is that a friend of mine got sent to this world with me, but I haven't been able to find her. My hunch is that she's also turned into a Pengyon. You haven't heard of any other talking Pengyons, have you? Can't say I have. Sorry. Oh, okay. What kind of person is this friend of yours? Maybe we'll run into her later. Her name is Mila. She has pretty red eyes and long golden hair. She carries herself with dignity and possesses a commanding presence. What else? Oh, and one of her quirks is that whenever she sees something tasty, she drools. That's an interesting quirk. You mean she actually drools? Also, she's known as the Lord of Spirits, because she's accompanied by four summon spirits with command over the elements. Ooh, Lord of Spirits. How royal sounding. Got it. If we hear anything, we'll let you know. It may be hard, but try to keep your spirits up, Jude. Thank you all so much. I hope you guys get a lead on Mila. You care about her even more than yourself. Uh, well, 
how do I put it? She's just a really special person to me, I guess. Fair enough. We need you champions. It, it's like there's a chance of receiving level four random skills on a hot. Oh, yeah, familiar with those. Arrow egg therms? Therms? I don't know. A talking penguin? I didn't dream that up, right? No, that penguin was very real. Or rather, it seems to actually be a human named Jude. He said he came from another world. No matter how much we see, life is still full of mysteries, isn't it? He's got guts, I'll give him that. It'd be nice if we could help him somehow. He's kind to Pengyons, too. If he was telling the truth, that would make him a castaway from another dimension. We seafarers always help out anyone who's adrift. Personally, I'm curious about this Mila girl, the Lord of Spirits. She might have a connection to the four Empyreans, or even Inominat himself. Seems unlikely, but I suppose anything's possible. Just in case. I'll keep everything Jude the Penyon told us in mind. Okay, so... Good luck out there. Show him how I... To kind of catch you all up to speed, uh, you need to have uh, expeditions done all the way up till you get to... Um, Get access to Terror Island. Um, then go to Terror Island or Norman Island. Then come back here and follow. Basically, follow. Um, that's the missing piece that I didn't tell you guys. You have to have up to Terror Terror Island or Norman Norman Island unlocked. So once we you get that, you get. All the way up here, then we go to Tell Sin. And then right there in front of the church. I know you guys. I heard you put a real dent in the Exorcist's strength. I take it you're a Bloodwing? Got any new information for us? With all the turmoil, there's a lot of noise out there. But I've heard one rumor that stands out. So there was this skilled exorcist Praetor at the top of his game, yeah? Apparently, he got taken down by a Pengyon. Oh? And how'd this Pengyon supposedly pull that off? I know it sounds like I'm pulling your leg, but I'm serious! The Praetor said the Pengyon attacked with arts of earth, water, fire, and wind. The four elements. That's not all. From what I hear, this Pinyon sports red eyes and a golden coat. They call it Goldapen. All right, so where is this Goldapen? The attack happened in the Figal ice caps. But I gotta warn you guys, Goldapen is said to be an ominous creature that signals the end of the world. Listen, I'm telling you this for your own good. Whatever you do, you'd better steer clear. Why would you say that? Oh, now we have to check this out. So it's a Pengyon with red eyes, a gold coat, and control over all four elements? That must mean... They're calling her Goldapen, huh? I've seen a lot of things out there, but never anyone who has mastered all four elements. Excluding myself, of course. <laughs> Whatever she is, if she's taken down a Praetor, she might be willing to work with us. Or, you know, it could be a trap. This strengthens the case that she could be connected to the four Empyreans. Either way, we should probably go and find out. I'll send word to Jude and Isalt. Hold on. That might complicate the situation. We promised we'd let him know if we heard anything. I'm just staying true to our word. Fine. But I have my own way of doing things, too. Now we head back to Helavis.
Yeah, I would have never figured out that we had to do the, um, going to the end. Look! Red eyes? Golden coat? It's Goldapen, all right. And she's even got that... quirk. Be careful. If what we heard is true, she can use those four great spirits in battle. Uh, see? She's drooling. Does that mean she thinks we look tasty? Does that mean she's a man-eating Pengyon? Wait! Don't fight! Hey! It's Jude! No matter how much Mila loves to eat, she'd never attack a person without a good reason. Huh? Wait. This Pengyon isn't Mila. Are you all right? When I got your message, I ran all the way here without stopping to eat or drink. That's enough. When will you people learn to leave this Pengyon alone? Hunting for food, I could understand. But I won't allow you to take this creature's life on some flimsy notion of bad omens. If you want the Pengyons, you'll have to fight me first! Who the hell are you? I'm killing Flash! But I'm this close. I want this! Form zero! Right? Damn, it's hard to hit her. You're strong. You know your way around a sword. As do you. I can see that Jude wasn't exaggerating when he called you the Lord of Spirits. Jude? Do you know him? I've been looking all over for him. He's right there. Oh, Jude! Thank goodness. I'm so glad you're safe. Mila, you can tell it's me? Of course I can. You're a lot smaller on the outside, but you're still you on the inside. <laughs> Thanks, Mila. That being said, I haven't exactly had an easy time in this form. Hmm. Yes, I can see how it might have given you some trouble. <laughs> Leia and Elise would probably be worried sick, and Alvin would tease you mercilessly. I think there's a way I can change back. When I fought these guys before, I was somehow able to do it. You fought them? So they really are a bunch of no-good Pengyon abusers. We're not, I swear. It's all a misunderstanding. It's okay, Mila. They're the ones who told me where to find you, and they're not Pengyon abusers. Oh, all right then. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go jumping to the wrong conclusions about you. Everyone, thank you so much for reaching out to me. No need to thank us. We just did the same as anybody would. I'm glad you found your friend. However, both of you are still stuck here. It's fine. The two of us will figure something out. We'll get Jude back to his normal self and find our way home to Riza Maxia. Yeah. Oh, do you want to come along too? You know this Pengyon? Yeah, for some reason I've taken quite a liking to him. Something about him just feels familiar. <laughs> I suppose so.
they're gone. Is it really okay to let them leave? What do you say, Aizen? Do you think Mila is connected to the Empyreans? No. Her arts felt fundamentally different from the ones we Malakim use. Agreed. I think I might actually believe they came from another world. In that case, we can let them be. Since she took down that exorcist, I don't think we need to worry about her joining forces with the Abbey. Yeah, but couldn't she still join our side? I wonder. I feel like she might be a bit out of our league. I don't know. I think you two have more in common than you'd care to admit. We should leave them be. Besides, if they came with us, Eleanor might try to eat Jude. I would not! <laughs> Why did <laughs> we're gonna make that jab at Eleanor? Ah, there we go. Yep. Mila at your side for those who know what her crown and glory is. Okay, um so Still one more part to this crest that will do. Um, well, I guess we need to collect that at some point. <laughs> oh, there's another side crest there. Is it true that more demons are appearing in other towns? And that some exorcists have suddenly lost their powers? Yes, I'm afraid it is. Is... everything going to be alright? Leave her alone, son. You're bothering the exorcist. I just wanted to know how other places were doing. In every city, the frequent demon attacks have endangered lives, caused chaos, and hindered travel and trade. Farms have been hit hard, and harvests are delayed, it's certain that there will be food shortages before long. I thought as much. Well then, that settles it. Settles what? I'm going to plant an orchard and some vegetable fields. We've been lucky. We've been spared the worst of it. Also, the soil here is rich and suited for farming. I can't fight the demons, but I can help stabilize the food supply. I want to do what I can to help. That's wonderful to hear. I'm rooting for you with all my heart. You know... If you're starting a farm, you're going to need someone at your side. Would you please stop bringing that up? No. If you're serious about this, I want to do everything I can to find you a match. So on that note, how about it? He's a good boy. You don't have to marry him right away. You can take it slow. Sorry, I'm kind of married to my work. A shame. Well, what about you? The scary girl over there. Who are you calling scary? Uh, mm, mm. uh, my apologies, miss. Hey, aren't you forgetting someone? No way! Um, I mean, love, marriage, that's not important right now. Besides, I have a date with these saplings. He chose a tree over me. <laughs> uh, Eleanor got proposed to. Velvet also, but got insulted. And Margulu was overlooked for a tree. <laughs> so we hit enhance unnamed blade to level ten. Ooh, void blade. Ooh, and we see the unnamed link. So that is it. That is the ultimate weapon for Velvet. Can't be enhanced anymore. Well, that's pretty cool. So let's go dismantle. You can go. Uh, them. Platinum. Uh, 
Oh, I guess we need to should sell the other crap we don't need. Oh, let's see if we can enhance. Uh, no. Sell. Let's do. Let's go. Go go. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yep, that's everything. Conditions returned. Good luck out there. All right, and we come here. Mercio was attacked by the Lord of Calamity, and the town was lost. They say a bizarrely dressed witch chased down the townspeople and devoured any she caught. That must be the Lord of Calamity. She dressed as a cackling witch to toy and torment us humans. That monster! They say she wore a black cloak, a big hat, and rode a broomstick. She jeered and jested at those she caught. So, a demon impersonated a witch and hunted humans, huh? What happened in Mercio really got twisted in the telling. That's the grapevine for ya. But that aside, this is unforgivable! I'd never use a broom or wear a black cloak. It'd go against my superb fashion sense. Got that. This guy's an important one. Oh, woe and misfortune, yo! The Harbinger of the End has come to Norman Island, meow. The Harbinger of the End? What are you talking about? The Harbinger of the End is said to deliver judgment upon the world, meow. If he judges us bad, he will destroy us all. If he judges us good, he'll grant a single wish, meow. That's rather binary. Sounds like a man of extremes. Not just extreme, but all-powerful, Meow. Whatever you do, you'd better stay away from Norman Island. Uh, okay, just stop. Stop telling us not to do things! Norman Island's the next area we go to and Did that should wrap it up. Hear? The search party that went to the Laban Tunnel was wiped out by a demon. Really? They were the ones out searching for Count Kapalus, weren't they? You mean the one who managed to get kidnapped? Despite everyone else at his manor, servants and children alike getting killed? You'd think noblemen like that would have some decent exorcists among their personal guard. Suppose he did. But I heard every blade there, sword and spear alike, was found chipped and cracked to hell. Hmm. What kind of demon could do that? Who are the Kapaluses? They are one of the great noble lines, on par with Oscar's Dragonia family, and have served Midgand for generations. People refer to them as the royal family's hidden dagger. Unlike me, you never hear good rumors about them. They say behind the royal family's glory lies blood and tears shed at the hand of the Kapalus family. But those are just rumors. Although I do know that in recent times, the Count had stood against the rise of the Abbey. I couldn't care less about the whereabouts of some noble. But we should be careful of the demon that took out all those exorcists. Yeah, it sounds like a worthy opponent. Oh, we got a quest there. We didn't come back um, here for quite a while, so... Yeah, so... We missed out. Oh, uh, there's some additional stuff here we need. I've got a message from the boss. An antique collector named Wan Jin has died, and his sizable stash is being sold off. What do I care about some old pots and paintings? I doubt you do. 
This message isn't for you. It's for Aizen. For me? Why? This Wan Jin person was apparently quite the dragon researcher, amassing old books and materials on them. The boss just figured some of those books might come in handy to you. I see. There's a shop out in Port Cadnix that's unloading them as we speak. Might want to get a move on before they're gone. Port Cadnix. I'll keep that in mind. Give Tabitha my regards. So we'll go take out that too. That place really was a prison island. Worse, I heard that's where the Lord of Calamity was born. Where did you hear that? From an exorcist who lost his Malak and caught the demon blight. He screamed it as he was killing his exorcist buddies. It happened in the forest. I managed to hide. I've never been so terrified in my life. An exorcist turned into a demon. He must have lost himself when he lost his Malak. Looks like we really did a number on the Abbey. If that's true, then it means the Calamity was born right under the Abbey's nose, and they let her escape. How could they let that happen? I don't know, but I guess it means the exorcists aren't perfect. I thought that if we followed the Shepherd, the Abbey would save us. But maybe that was just wishful thinking. Huh. The question is... Oh yeah, we got one. Oh, don't... Dude. Norman Island. Cabinet and... We got a couple of things extra to do, so... How many do we have left? Do -do. Got that guy. That guy. That one. No, need to find that guy. Oh, no, not many left. Out of fucking way. Die. Wait, how, how the hell did Velv die? One down. You really do have a peculiar air about you. How do we die on weaklings? I just want to go get this, uh... Geopoint or whatever the hell it's called. Stay away. Way, out of the way. Cool, got that. Let's see. Let's just come up here right quick. I don't expect to see anything, but. Yeah, nothing here. Okay, um... Let's go to Norman Island first.
away. Up here. Oh, it's Jude and Mila. What are you two doing here? Is there any chance the two of you are the harbinger of the end? No, we're not. But the harbinger has entrusted us with his battle. The battle of judgment. The battle of judgment? You're not saying that if we lose to you, our world will be destroyed, are you? That's exactly what we're saying. This harbinger of the end, did he promise to send you back to your world if you won? Look, we just have things left to do back in Riza Maxia. I'm sure you do, but... We've got unfinished business here in our world, too. A girl and her pet? You really want to take us on? Not a pet. Magic Kazam! A human! What? I've never seen my little incantation have such an effect before! Such is the power of the Harbinger of the End. Perhaps now you see the gravity of this battle. You'll have to give it everything you've got if you want to beat us. In place of the Harbinger of the End? Let the Battle of Judgment begin! What are you two trying to do? Hold on, headphones just died. Oh, my God. 
I think we're done here. <sighs> Mila! This fight is over. Victory goes to the woman there. I take it you're the harbinger of the end? Correct. I am the one who delivers judgment upon this world. As the victor, I shall grant you one wish. Whatever it be, speak it now. I want you to return these two back to their world. Why? You said you have things to do back home, right? That's why. Are you certain? I can grant you anything your heart desires. Even the chance to turn back time and undo the past. No, I won't run away. Not from my past, and not from the wrongs I've done. That is my decision. Then the judgment has been dealt. I sense no malice in your will. As such, the world shall not meet its demise. Huh? You see, your answer was the true test of judgment. We were charged with drawing out your true innermost wish. Then the Harbinger's a fool. I'm the Lord of Calamity here. And what of it? Not all demons must be evil. And not all heroes must be good. Humans are complex creatures, as capable of love as they are of hatred, and committing sin as often as acts of charity. Goodness and malice are but two halves of one whole, the line between which is ever shifting. Well then, you're as bad as it gets. You were ready to destroy the world, had the one who answered fallen under the shifting notion of evil. Indeed. But the good within that same single person carries the opportunity to save the world as well. That's a terrible gamble. No, I always believed it would turn out this way. Me too. I trusted you would all do the right thing in the end. <laughs> Jude has good instincts when it comes to humans. That's too bad, because I'm not a human. You're not? Well... <laughs> That still doesn't really change anything. No matter if you're a human, a spirit, or a demon lord. Yeah, that doesn't matter at all. <sighs> Come. I have kept you two away from your world for far too long. It is finally time for me to return you to where you belong.
When the end times come, a talking Pengyon will declare judgment upon the sinful. Goldapen is said to be an ominous creature that signals the end of the world. Oh uh, yeah, I remember all that now. I can't believe that Goldapen was the harbinger of the end. That was a close call. If Velvet had devoured everything like usual, the world would have ended. Hey, I'm not the Reaper here. Anyway, I'm glad Jude and Mila were able to go home. Definitely. Although, I'm not sure I'll be able to eat Pengyun meat ever again. Indeed. Wouldn't want to accidentally nosh on the Harbinger of the End. Alright, that fight was a little frustrating there. Alright, um... Well, what do we need to do next? Let's do that port. is Bunny Bonanza Saturday. Bunny Bonanza Saturday? What's that? I've heard of this. You eat a hearty, healthy meal of rabbit meat to help you get nice and strong. You eat rabbits? No, silly. The night of the third Saturday of every month, lonely people go to sleep hugging a rabbit. Huh. If you go to sleep with a fuzzy friend in your arms, you're sure to have good dreams. No, I'm sure I heard that you eat them too. You must be thinking of Rat Pig Roundup Saturday. There's a Saturday for Rat Pigs, too? Yup. On the night of the third Saturday of every month, people who aren't lonely eat Rat Pigs to get nice and strong. Makes sense. Rat Pigs are great sources of nutrition. An amazing choice for anyone, lonely or not. The secret to a happy family is Rat Pig Roundup Saturday. That's what I always say. <laughs> I feel bad for the Rat Pigs. Okay, that wasn't it. Hey? Yeah. Oh ho ho! If it weren't Eisen, I haven't seen you in forever, laddie. I heard an antique stealer was handling Wan Jin's collection. I take it that's you? His father and I go way back, so his family begged me to handle it. You know this guy? He is... excitable. But he's got a good eye for treasure. He's the one who sold me Fujibayashi's rod. Oh, the one we used to fish up that demon pot, right? From the looks of it, you've already sold everything. I had tons for sale! A huge, massive collection, but the customers came rushing in and bought about everything that weren't nailed down. <sighs> And here we are, a week late and a sack of gold short. Come now, Conjurus. Never underestimate the great Donella. I thought this might happen, so I set something special aside. And it's a real hoot, too. A book written in ancient Avarost. Why do you have that book? For years, the Abbey's been scooping up every scrap of paper with Avarost writings. It seems they have a bone to pick with it. But mischievous lads like yourself have always liked getting your hands on such forbidden fruits, yeah? How much is it? It's yours. Free. Gratis. I've heard the rumors. If this book helps you smash the Abbey to rubble, that's enough for me. Well, if you're sure, I'll take it. Of course! Another ancient book. We're gonna need Grimoire's help to read it. I had a hunch this might happen, so I actually brought Grim along with me. <sighs> Let's get this over with. Yes, teacher. If you read this part as Sneera, then it means should do. But if it's a snick, then it means don't do. The other word attached to it is pronounced cre. Which of those first two readings feels right to you? Sound it out. Hmm. Cre, Sneera, Cre, Snick. Cresnick. Cresnick feels right somehow. All right. 
and Kresnik translates as... To retrieve something intact. To dig it out. But if that's what it means, then... Yes, this is quite the extraordinary book you found. Hey, you two mind explaining what's so special in a way the rest of us can understand? It's research about dragons and Malachim, written long ago by someone trying to figure out how to change a dragon back into a Moloch. They can be changed back? Does the book tell us how it can be done? The book only contains records of failures and the conclusion it was impossible. But something interesting is written in the corner here. Unless the intact heart of a white-horned dragon is consumed, a Moloch's blessing shall be everlasting. Hmm. By devouring the heart of a white-horned dragon, a Moloch's blessing will be lost. Are you saying that this is a way to break the Reaper's curse? If what this book says is true, yes. Meaning one Moloch would have to eat another Moloch's heart? That's a little gruesome even by my standards. Wait, was that something that actually happened during the ancient Avaros period? The book states that during the course of the research, some Malachim were discovered to have lost their blessings. But it's not conclusive. Guess there's no way to know unless we give it a shot. Do you intend to try? Savid! What are you doing here? A nice old lady at the market told me what you guys were up to. I guess you know the Blood Wings too, then. Oh, you know. The ladies just can't keep away from a good man like me. Young and old. They just love me. Huh. <laughs> Not a chance. You guys don't know how to take a joke, do you? Well, some things aren't a joking matter. You gonna try and kill her? And what if I do? You won't. I'll stop you. Even if it means you have to kill me? What is it with you and killing everything? Maybe you've been a little too receptive to the whole Reaper thing, huh? Don't answer a question with another question. I asked you first, Aizen. Sometimes, death can be the release someone desperately needs. <sighs> I will kill that white horned dragon. Don't call her a dragon, damn it! <sighs> she has a name. Theodora. I have nothing more to say to you. This is your final warning. Show them how I freed's crew can... So, are we gonna have to fight a dragon? Nope. Uh... Is he the demon that attacked the search party in a bank cavern? Where is that at? Uh... <laughs> Old map. Aha. Okay. Never guess that devouring a dragon heart could lift the Reaper's curse. Oh, what a glorious day it'll be when you drop the curse part and just become a Reaper at heart. It's like a bad fly. The more you try to shoo it away, the more it sticks around. Do you think Eisen will really go through with it? Don't ask me. Well, I can't exactly talk to Mogilu and Rokuro about it. Tact is lost on them. You're all I've got. <sighs> hey, Eisen? What? Are you... are you really gonna kill the dragon to get rid of the curse? Yeah, I am. Even knowing what she means to Zavid? 
All the more reason to do it. All the more? What do you mean? I've said my piece. You can figure it out on your own. to the right place, idiot. So... That's what we want to do. This way, right? No, we want to come here. Before we go much farther, let's save before <laughs> something bad goes. Um, something bad happens. I right, think the geo points right here. Let's see. Where do we want to go? Okay, then not this way. Let's go back this way. I think I know where we need to go or get to. It's just actually getting there. Ah, right 
करते हैं Falling from the ceiling. Pick the dead end. Why wouldn't we? Run around. Let's go this way. That geo point. I should have make things faster. Velvet. <sighs> we won. I wasn't good enough. What do you mean? That demon was really strong. I don't mean the demon. I mean me. If Shigure were here, he'd have sliced it clean in half. But you use shorter dual blades rather than just one bigger one like him, so of course... No. He'd have done it with a shorter blade, too. You can't be serious. He's right. I think Shigure might really be capable of that. Yeah. He's done it before. Can I ask you a question? I don't mind. You want to know more about my clan? Yeah! Well, as the eldest son, Shigure became head of the clan and ran things for a while. But three years ago, a rumor started floating around that he was planning an insurrection, and our lord immediately called for his execution. Sounds like he doesn't waste any time. Shigure never particularly cared about our lord to begin with. All he ever respected was personal strength. Then did your lord send you to do the job? Yeah. The only thing that can take down a Rangetsu swordsman is another Rangetsu swordsman. I thought I could handle it. 
I knew his every trick and had the time and place all planned out. But when it happened... You got your ass beat. Yeah. He made a fool out of me. I came at him with a greatsword, and he just used a small one. All the training I'd done, I couldn't land a hit on him. A rude awakening if there ever was one. Damn straight. I couldn't deny it. Shigure cast aside my greatsword and just laughed. Train harder, he told me. I was so frustrated by my weakness, my inexperience. So much so that I wanted to end my own life. So much so that I turned into a demon. Rokuro. In the end, Shigure escaped, and I was arrested for failing to perform my duty and sent to the prison island. And the rest, as they say? So you regret not being able to kill your brother, huh? I know it sounds crazy, but that's just who I am. I'm not here to judge you. I'm just using you for my own purposes. As long as you fight my enemies, that's all that matters. That's the plan. That's what I do best as a demon. <laughs> Takes care of that. Uh, might as well just go out of these. And right. Like all the way on the other side. Did you hear? Another group of exorcists got taken out by the Whitehorn. Again? But they sent praetors after it this time. Is it really that strong? The exorcists managed to wound it pretty bad. But they were still wiped out. Between this dragon and the Lord of Calamity, what's going to happen to the kingdom? We have to keep it together. That thing's still out in the Guybrook Icefield, you know. If the worst comes to pass, we need to ensure the public's safety. We'd better make sure we know the evacuation routes. Yes, sir. Whitehorn. They must be talking about Theodora. Yeah. If the dragon is that badly wounded, then now's my chance. Let's head for the Guybrook Icefield. Uh -huh. With people talking about that dragon so much, I wouldn't be surprised if we ran into Zavid. Yeah. And if he and Aizen butt heads again, I don't think we'll be able to avoid a fight this time. Aizen said he was going to kill that dragon because she's important as Avid. And he said that to kill was to save. What could he mean by that? Well, now we just got another thing to do. Good luck, Al. I guess we'll finish up the. Um, with the uh, white horn dragon. Uh, let's go ahead and save. God damn it. Yes. Alright, where do we need to go? Ice fields. Should be outside of Helovis. Hey, no. Okay, it's up there. Which means we need to go to the other side. Out of the way. There's a dragon. She's 
hurt, just like they said. Is this really how you mean to lift your curse? I'm not the cursed one. I'm game. Let's go. I told you, that ain't happening on my watch. And if you stop me? What else? I'm going to figure out a way to save you. If that's what you want to try, then go ahead. But know that I'm not going to stop. You know, I just don't get it. How could a guy like Ifri be friends with someone so hellbent on senseless killing? Sometimes, to kill someone is to save them. Who the hell is going to be saved by being killed? There's not one damn person in the whole world! No matter what happens, you can't give up on living. That's my creed. Well then. Guess we're doing this. What? Why does it have to come to this? You both want to save the same person! Sometimes, you just have to fight these things out. Yeah. Back, I think good. If you want to stop me, then fight to kill. No. Don't stop me. You cannot hurt me. You thought I'd go there. Annihilating me. Now, rise. Arise. Ascending. Angels. Angel. Oh, <laughs> Threat. You got that right. Don't even try it. I'm not dead yet, at least. Thank you for saving me. I should be thanking you. I'm just glad you're not hurt. Me? That's right, kid. Nothing would hurt Theodora more than to harm a child. Theodora... The thing is, even when a child's lost their parents, their family, even when despair fills their heart, if you hold their hand, they'll squeeze back. Those hands, frozen cold from fear and insecurity, will start to feel warmth again. That warmth, a tiny spark deep within, can rekindle their feeling of being alive because they possess the determination to keep on living. That's why Theodora never turned her back or gave up on a child. She was more passionate about life than anyone I've ever known. And that's why you're protecting her. Just how long do you plan on cleaning up after that dragon? She's Theodora. Once a Moloch becomes a dragon, there's no turning back. And you think that gives you the right to kill her? You talk like you have such noble intentions, but you're not fooling anyone. You just want to lift your Reaper's curse. I'm not the one who's cursed. You're telling me there's some other Reaper out there? Don't answer a question with another question. Shut the hell up! You're all talking no fight. You're a damn coward. That's all you are. In the future, if you try to lay even a finger on Theodora, well, there's going to be hell to pay. Give me hell if you like, but think about one thing first. Think about what she taught you about living and consider what it really means to be alive. Why does it have to be like this? 
I get that their creeds mean a lot to them both, but isn't that all the more reason for them to try to understand each other? But instead, they resort to fighting without even listening to each other first. How can they be like this? Yeah, I don't want them to fight either. But there's something else I can't figure out. Is it about why Aizen's so intent on killing that dragon? That's part of it. What I can't figure out is what he means when he says that killing can also save someone. And how he's not the one with the curse. Maybe he feels pity for Theodora, and how she's doomed to keep on living as a dragon. Yeah. What does it really mean to live? <sighs> this topic sure got deep fast. Yeah. Alright, and I believe that's all the little quests. Who knows, there may be more, but I think that's it. So we'll come turn in these code reds and save and yeah that's gonna be the end of Tales of Pistoria. So blades So yeah, uh, this is what we're going to draw into Tales of Bosteria. So I hope you all enjoyed and had fun going through this. Um, still a great game, one of my favorites. Um, there's a couple one-offs little things that could be done, but I think that's um, it for Tales of Bosteria. Um, this is the final part. So. From here, we'll move on to Tales of Zetstray and uh, kind of continue in this world and see how things ultimately resolve. So, I hope you all enjoy. Um, this Twitch, this is going to be um, it for a little while. Uh, I need to go eat dinner and need to give the headphones some time to charge and all that. Um, and then the race is on here um, relatively soon, so I'm gonna watch that. Uh, so I'll be back after it, after the race, um, in, uh, about four hours or so. Uh, and when we come back, we are gonna be starting something new, so you're gonna wanna be here for that. So until then, I shall see y'all the next time. Later.